Welcome to a Fletcher Free Library original program. Hey friends, it's Megan from Stories with Megan. I am going to read you a book today that we have never read in story time. Um, and this book has a special connection to Burlington. So uh, the library and Burlington City Arts and uh, Burlington Parks Recreation and Waterfront teamed up together to propose a plan for a story walk. Maybe some of you have been to a story walk before, but it's where all the pages of a book are laid out along a path and you can walk and read at the same time. And we were awarded money by the city um, as part of their innovation challenge and also got this pretty sweet hat. And so we're very excited to set up that story walk for you, um, hopefully this summer. And I want to read you one of the books that we're going to use for the story walk. This book is called Over and Under the Pond. The book is written by Kate Messner and it is illustrated by Christopher Silas Neal. This book is published by Chronicle Books. We are reading it with their permission and thank you to them and to the author and illustrator for letting us use this book. Oh, also, in case you didn't know, Kate Messner lives just on the other side of Lake Champlain. She is almost a Vermonter. Oh, what do you see on the end papers here? Do they give you any clues about what we might read about in this story? Over the pond we slide, splashing through lily pads, sweeping through reeds. The water's a mirror reflecting the sky, sunshine and clouds, then a shadow below. What's down there, I ask? Under the pond, Mom says. Under the pond is a whole hidden world of minnows and crayfish, turtles and bullfrogs. We're paddling over them now. Over the pond, we skim past tall rushes. Whirligig beetles loop and twirl, skaters on a warm summer surface. Under the pond, minnows dart through waving forests of grass, while a brook trout lurks, ready to lunge. Over the pond, we lift and dip and pull past a row of painted turtles on a waterlogged tree. One, two, three. They slip off and away. Splash, gurgle, sploosh, under the pond. Over the pond. Cattails rustle and shush in the wind. Listen close. Cooklery! Red winged blackbirds race by. One has grass for her nest. Under the pond, a caddisfly larva builds a home of her own, a secret shelter of pebbles and sand. Over the pond, the shadows of trees lean out from the shore. We coast under a low hanging branch. A moose looks up with a mouthful of water. Mouthful of water lilies. We've interrupted his lunch. Under the pond, Beavers dive deep. They pump with powerful tails and rise to the surface with delectable roots from the mud. Are you going to have roots from the mud for lunch? That's not what you eat for lunch? I think I'm gonna have to go find some roots from the mud.
Over the pond, the wind gives us a push and stirs the light dappled leaves on shore. There on a branch, a new goldfinch teeters, finally ready to fly. Let's see the goldfinch. Under the pond, tadpoles are changing, learning to hop. They're losing tails, growing legs, growing up. Over the pond, there at the shore, tall and silent and still, a great blue heron stares down into the deep. It tenses takes one long-legged step and strikes. It catches a wiggling quicksilver minnow from where it was hiding under the pond. Do those minnows look familiar? Where did we see them before? on the end papers. Sometimes the end papers give us clues about what's going to happen in the story. Over the pond we drift, heads tipped up to the sun. A woodpecker cl clings to a teetering pine, digging for ants. Under the pond, an otter claws for freshwater mussels. Over the pond, a sleepy dragonfly lands for a rest. His spindly legs tickle my knee. Look at the sky. What time of day do you think it is? Under the pond, dragonfly larvae watch what swims by. They catch minnows in monster-fast jaws. Over the pond, the shadows stretch. Ospreys circle on quiet wings. Raccoons and mink stalk the shoreline for supper. Under the pond, with a flip of a tail, a crayfish disappears in the dark. over the pond. We head for home. We glide, swish, bump, right up onto shore as a far-off loon calls good night. The sky turns from sunset to dusk to dark. Night settles over the pond. The prowling catfish and drowsy turtles, the scuttling crayfish and tadpoles turned frogs, wading herons and stalking raccoons. and the hidden world under the pond. And then here at the back of the book, the author has given us more information about all of the different animals that she talked about in this story. The end. So when I read this book, even though it's called Over and Under the Pond, I think about Lake Champlain because that's the big body of water that's nearest to me. And I think about how much fun it will be to go out in a boat or maybe to go out swimming or maybe just to stand down at the waterfront and look at the water. I'm really looking forward to being able to do that. I hope if you get a chance to go outside in Burlington that you can go look at the water too and think about all of the things that are happening over and under the water. Thanks for watching, friends. I'll see you soon.